Bound is a platforming art game developed by Plastic Studios, published by Sony. The game features ballet or some kind of contemporary dance in place of action and fighting, which plays out beautifully. The movements of the character and the locations are all quite beautiful. The platforming elements are somewhat unnecessary and sort of hinder the experience of moving through elegantly as a dancer. Uh, several pitfalls just seemed a bit cheap and hard to predict and with the penalty just being restarting a little way back it seemed kind of pointless and seemed like the platforming should have been a little bit easier. This would have created a more smooth and dreamlike experience. I played in VR which really lent itself to the experience making the world seem even more awe-inspiring than it already was. However, there was never a perfect camera angle, and it sort of detracted from the experience a little bit to try and flick the camera around as it flashed between space to space. But the rare occasion that I did get the camera in a nice position for long enough, the game felt good. The game is about an hour long and might be quite forgettable for quite a few players. However, I want to talk about it because of something that it does that is quite interesting in my opinion. Bound delivers a very interesting experience, narratively speaking. Now, this is a little complicated for me because the actual story of the game is awful. It's really, really cliche and boring. Um, it's the typical indie studio thing of delivering a story that is basically saying parents are traumatizing. And it just feels like 99% of indie games are going with that plotline. Or oh, the monster is your dad, the monster is your mum, the monster is the scary world around you when you're a kid. It's not interesting, it's not interesting, and it's incredibly privileged to have that plotline. To be like a rich white family being traumatized by dad shouting every now and then, it's not, it's not engaging on any level. It just seems really pretentious and really self-isolating. There's no... There's no kind of empathy or sympathy towards greater issues in the world, and it's very, it's very much dealing with first world problems, which, you know, a lot of us are in that sort of situation, but it doesn't ring true. It, it just, it feels really dead to keep on hammering this one plot throughout all these indie games that parents are scary when you're a kid. So, so what? It's, it's so... Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible to always find this story in indie games. I want every indie game designer to go through some kind of writing course, or read some books, or, or just step outside of themselves for a little bit. The, the concept that parents are scary is not grounds for making a game. It's, it's agonizing. It's really agonizing. I hope that I never ever play another game where my big scary parents are the villain because so what? Get over it. Get over it. Especially when the parents just yelling. That's not... that's... so? So? I'm getting frustrated talking about it right now. Like, you're not even depicting a really bad situation. You're just depicting like, oh yeah, that stuck out with me because it was negative. So what? So what? And especially if you're not gonna focus on any of the highlights of childhood as well to compare, if you're not gonna show the lovely car journeys down to the beach, you're not gonna show the time spent together happy, and you're just gonna say, my parents were always shouting, but we also lived in this lovely house and had lots of stuff. There's no texture 
to this narrative at all. However, Bound pulled me through and intrigued me the whole way through because of the art style and the, the art of movement. The way that you move through the game just feels great. To use dance to move and to use dance to combat is fantastic. And the art style and the concept of it being abstract outweighs the pathetic story. Now, when I was playing, I kept on wishing that they had just removed the story entirely and left it up to a bit more of a mystery with you moving and fighting through these things that are attacking you. That being said, attacking is a bit of a generous word. It's more like minor hindrances as you move through. But the struggle to move against this terrain is narrative enough. I wish that Plastic had really gone heavier on the art side of the art game thing and just dropped the narrative entirely. The narrative within the movement is way stronger than anything that they could have written, evidently because they picked the, the most cliched rubbish story there is. Bound's rubbish story is a strong argument in favour of the concept of mystery being greater than explanation. Art and artistry shouldn't have to be explained. I've said previously that unanswered questions are a lot stronger than answered ones, and that mystery should be left unsolved to create a greater sense of purpose to it. When playing the game, I couldn't help but contrast it to the works of Project Eco. Eco, or Ico, as you might want to pronounce it, as well as its successors, Shadow of the Colossus and The Last Guardian, also have quite sparse, dreamlike art narrative, but they don't feel the need to give you all the answers. And because of that, it has a much stronger, lasting impression. The Project Eco games will always hold up. Every single one of them is powerful and lasting. The Project Eco games don't give you the answers to the world around you. It's up to you and your imagination to fill in the blanks. And with that, there's a much, much stronger story about the world going on. It's not that they don't know what the story is, the story is concrete and for certain it's there. It's just that you're experiencing it from one certain perspective, and living through that perspective makes the world far more tangible and lasting. Now I'm a strong believer that video games should be viewed as an art, and with the more abstract games that are more akin and more obviously a form of art, I feel that they shouldn't need to drag in cliches and narrative points from other medium. They should just be a soul experience. Oddly enough, it makes me think of Thumper. Now that's a rhythm game, and nothing is ever really explained to you. You just simply are in that world. It just happens. And once again, that's a really strong experience. Yes, because the gameplay is really solid, and yes, because the visual style is really solid, but also because there's no explanation of the world around you. It lingers with you like a strong dream that persuaded you to make a decision in your life. As the majority of video games feature a humanoid protagonist, there seems to be some kind of unspoken rule that Every game needs to have some foundation in some form of reality. Even if that world is a virtual reality, even if that world is a complete stylistic departure from the real world that we live in, every game seems to feel that it needs to have some sort of foundation to our human experience. Compare that to art. 
Art in a gallery may just be shapes and abstractions, just colour, and just a representation of emotion. In a similar vein, art films may feature humanoid characters to draw you through, but they don't always have the same need to anchor you in with some kind of strong, relatable narrative. Because in doing so, that actually dilutes the narrative. Take for example, Eraserhead. A lot of people could say that that movie is about becoming a father. A lot of people could say that that movie is just about a core deep down emotion. You don't need to understand what is happening. You just need to understand that you are questioning this world. The creative director of Bound said that everything in the game is a big metaphor. I would argue that there's a way to tell an artistic story without everything being a big metaphor. You can just simply make it be. The monster doesn't need to be a metaphor for your parents' abuse. The protagonist doesn't need to dance as a metaphor for their struggle against that parents' abuse. You can just make the game be that emotion. Just be that experience. You don't need to make it a metaphor. Now, you might think that that is kind of the same thing, but it's not. If you keep on showing what the metaphor is, then it remains being a metaphor. And then once you've undressed that metaphor, it just is that thing that it originally was, the, the parents' abuse in this case. But if you just make it the sole emotion and experience, if you removed the scenes in this game where the parents are causing abuse, if you removed the enemy monsters, like the giant enemy monsters in this game, that don't actually do anything to you, you would have a far, far stronger experience. The concept of moving and struggling through a world that is fighting against you is far stronger than creating a big bad monster and calling it Dad. Bound didn't make much of a splash and the reception was somewhat mixed and that seems kind of telling for me that as an art game it should have gone heavier into the art side, dropping all these narrative plot points as well as cleaning up the platforming. Again, it seems that developers worry too much about a game being a game, needing some kind of pitfall or way to die in a game. You don't need that. The experience would have been far stronger if I just went through the game struggling, never being respawned back in spot. That's so... you don't need that. There's ways around that. I felt like I wasn't fighting against the world or the narrative given to me. I was fighting against the developers instead, who had just put in pitfalls and nonsense. All in all though, if you can overlook the giant monsters representing your evil parents, if you can overlook the tableaus of white privilege and just experience the dance and the movement. I think there's something to be learned from Bound.